With so many women just on staff here and in the building, if, I mean, his comments kind of touched on women in the workforce. I mean, what do you tell them if they come to you with a concern about players speaking ill of, you know, women in general? Yeah, that hasn't happened. I, I don't think he was speaking uh, ill to women, but he has his opinions, and we all respect that. Um, I, I let you guys in this room, and you have a lot of opinions that I don't like. So. I mean, you can't say it better than that. That's coach of uh, Kansas City Chiefs, Andy Reid. He's defending Harrison Bucker because, you know, Bucker's getting a lot of – I, I don't quite understand it. It's like people didn't listen to what he said. He's getting a lot of criticism for the commencement speech that he gave at Benedictine College. We've talked about it over the past few days. Uh, but I love that his teammates now – you have Mahomes that came out in defense of him. You have the coach uh, that came out in defense of him, and as they should. And I'm, 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 I'm happy about this. But it's weird to see – women getting angrier at that than they were over the fact that you have women being shuttled out of positions on sports teams across the country at every level of competition, but they're mad at Harrison Bucker because he was defending them and had harsh words for men who don't. Welcome back to the program. Dana Lash with us. You can listen coast to coast. You can watch a simulcast of the radio program as well. Joining me now, she tweeted about this too, Riley Gaines, who is the author of Swimming Against the Current, Fighting for Common Sense in a World that Lost Its Mind. It's actually just out right now. It's just out this week. Congratulations, Riley, and thanks for being here. Of course, Dana. Thank you so much for having me on. Of course. I, you retweeted this. Did that kind of surprise you, the, the pushback that Bucker got considering the situation that you and other athletes have found themselves in? I mean, you're fighting to just be represented in, in competition, and he is actually supporting women, and they criticized him for it. You make a phenomenal point, and, and I hadn't really thought of it in that way. But the same people who are criticizing um, Harrison Bucker are the same people who are advocating for men to, to infiltrate into our sports, into our locker rooms, into our sororities, into our prisons. Uh, Senator Ted Cruz had, had some phenomenal questioning yesterday uh, in, the, in the U.S. Senate on that topic. It, it's mind-blowing. And I, I thought it was... Um, pretty good that this reporter said, oh, you're, you know, he speaks ill of women. If you watch his commencement speech, he was in tears speaking about his wife, how wonderful his wife is, how he celebrates his wife, uh, how, what she accomplishes and what she does in her everyday role as a mom and as a wife is phenomenal and something that only women can do. That's not speaking ill of women. Uh, so I could not have been more excited to see coach Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes. I'm sure there are several other of his teammates who defended him. And, and what I thought was beautiful was they said, look, we've known this guy for, for years, seven years, Patrick Mahomes said, and he said, I know his character. Mm -hmm. And that's something that the media has not reported on this, uh, which I think speaks volumes to the team, the leadership on that yeah. team. And of course, to Harrison Butker. You mentioned we're talking with Riley Gaines. Her new book out, Swimming Against the Current, is out this week. Uh, Senator Ted Cruz, it was uh, a hearing that involved uh, prison incarceration. And we've we've talked about this before on this program as it relates to California. We've had some women's advocacy groups. It's weird how you find common ground with some of the groups that you find common ground with. And I was really, frankly, stunned, Riley, at some of the stories that I heard from these advocates talking about women who are imprisoned. And then there are men who say, you know what, we feel like identifying, you know, right at the start of their trial, we feel like identifying as a woman. They're like repeat rapists, you know, serial rapists. And they're going to be housed with the women because of how they identify. They don't have to do any, no, no surgery, no, no other evidence, nothing, just their words, because now we're, t we're trusting rapists now. But this is, it's not, um, I mean, it's not anecdotal. It's like happening all over California, not just California, but now this is being adopted through the prison system. And, and you made you made a point uh, because you really like Ted Cruz's response to this. What are your thoughts on that? Because this goes far beyond sports now. Oh, of course it does. Yeah, to your point, I mean, this is happening in, in regard to what's happening in prisons. It's happening, happening in New York, Indiana, New Jersey, Ohio, wow. Kansas, of course, in California. You know, in California in recent weeks, there were over 1,600 men apply to be women to get into women's prisons. Most of these men, as you said, serial rapists convicted of some of the most heinous, awful crimes imaginable, that being sexual crimes, kidnapping, child pornography, uh, and they're getting in to these women's prisons. You know what they did? On Super Bowl Sunday, uh, these correctional officers in California worked overtime, clocked in overtime hours to go into these all women's facilities and install 
condom dispensers and dental dams. So not only now allowing for sexual intercourse in prisons, which is supposed to, to be, I mean, that, that's not supposed to happen. It's almost as if they're encouraging this. And it's because they installed these condoms because these condom dispensers, because HIV and AIDS are now running rampant in women's prisons because these male inmates who were formerly at, at male institutions have contracted HIV and AIDS and now are spreading it through women's facilities. Women are being impregnated by these men. It's it's heartbreaking is what it is. So they they go through they go through the the, the trial. They're serving their their sentence. They're they're taking their their penalty for the crimes that they committed. But I never at any point has it ever and now they're just supposed to assume that they're going to be sexually violated almost that it's as if it's this unspoken condition of penalty that they have to endure this. And the sad thing is many of these women uh, are victims of some sort of domestic violence uh, previously in their past life when, when they were able to roam free. And now they're being traumatized in that same way by these men. And the most, I mean, the craziest thing to me about this hearing yesterday on Capitol Hill was this was a hearing for uh, the federal judges. Uh, this judge that Ted Cruz, Senator Kennedy had some awesome questioning, Senator Lee did as well. This judge that they were, they were questioning is who Biden nominated to be a federal district court judge of the Southern District of New York. That's who he nominated. This woman should be nowhere near a court. Uh, she should be imprisoned alongside this man if that's what she thinks is truly fair. Yeah, fair, exactly. We're talking with Riley Gaines, her new book out, Swimming Against the Current. I wanted to talk to you about this because everybody knows your story. I think you really, especially as it relates to, to women in sports, I don't really think there was a lot of national discussion until you stepped out and really sacrificed you know quite a lot you were really viciously attacked by a lot of people and it was incredibly shameful to see uh just to stand up for the integrity of women's competitions and there were there was a there's a part in your book because you get really personal in this that i was unaware of i i i did track and field and and soccer throughout school uh, i i we didn't even have a swimming team in my high school and so i was completely unfamiliar you had a uh, uh, a piece in here early on, uh, a portion of your book, where you're talking about the suits that you wear and how really constraining they are for, you know, obviously for reasons to reduce drag, all this other stuff. But you paint a very clear picture of how, you know, there's no modesty in the locker room and you're in there and you're squirming to get in your suit and everything's just open to the world, you know, at least in the locker room. And you still had to do that even with, Leah Thomas, a man who you are saying is like really 6'4", is in there with you. That, I mean, I actually stopped reading it at that point, and I just, I couldn't believe that you all were subject. There was a lot that people didn't know, Riley, a lot that people didn't know. That is, I mean, that's insane that you were having to do that in front of a man, and there was no explanation ever made to you. No one ever went in and said, ladies, we have a man who's going to be on the team now. He's going to be in the locker room. No one ever set you all up for anything but failure with that. No, you're entirely right. And not only did they not forewarn us that this would be the arrangement, they told us that, that we were the problem if we opposed this. They told us that we were the bigots. We had to go to, to psychological services, seriously, to train ourselves to be okay with this. Re-education services, of course, provided through none other than the LGBTQ education centers on campus. And yeah, to your point, and I want you to put your daughter, you know, put yourself in our shoes, but but more importantly, put put your daughter in our shoes. Uh, swimming locker rooms, not a place of modesty. These suits, as you said, your racing suits that you put on, it takes about 20 minutes to really poke and prod yourself into these suits, 20 minutes of which you're fully exposed. Um, you have your back turned, again, putting on this suit. And all of a sudden you hear a man's voice in that changing space. And you turn around and you look up and there's a six foot four, 22 year old man, fully intact, fully naked, fully exposing himself inches away from where you were simultaneously undressing. It's feelings of, I mean, it was feelings of betrayal. It was feelings of utter violation. Uh, it was traumatizing, really, and, and not even necessarily traumatizing because of what we were forced to see or or how we were forcibly exploited. 
It was traumatizing for me to know just how easy it was for those people who created and enforced these policies to totally dismiss our rights to privacy without even a second thought, without even bare minimum forewarning us that this would be the arrangement. You're shamed for your own instincts of self-protection and that it seems like women are being rewired for that. And that's the common theme that we see across the board. I was just at uh, SUNY Cortland, a college in New York. I was speaking on, on their campus and I went to the restroom and I was appalled, again, a college campus, to see what was staring back at me on the bathroom stall door. It says, it was a flyer and this flyer says, do you feel like someone is using the wrong bathroom? Do not stare at them. Do not challenge them. Do not insult them. Do not purposefully make them feel uncomfortable. Do respect their privacy. Do respect their identity and do carry on with your day. And I sat there and I read this and I thought to myself, you know, I mean, what's, what's really the underlying message here? And I, my husband was with me and I told him to go check the men's restroom, of course. This, this flyer was not in the men's restroom. But in thinking about what they were really saying, just as you said, Dana, what they're telling you to do is ignore your gut instincts. Don't believe what your eyes are telling you or what your ears are hearing. Uh, let your, your guard down, shut up, and pull your pants down anyways. Mm. That's the message I got from this flyer in this bathroom. It's shameful. And it's, and it's, it's always been more than just about competition and sports it really is uh, i mean it is about that it's i mean it's a subjugation of women and it's making us forget you know the our instincts and in protecting ourselves it's horrible and you've been leading the fight on this and getting a lot of flack for it and we appreciate you doing it because it's for all everybody's daughters and sons the book swimming against the current fighting for common sense in a world that's lost its mind it's a it's a very very um very honest transparent book and i'm sure it wasn't easy to write some of the stuff that you did but i think it's necessary so people can really fully understand what's at stake here. Riley Gaines, congratulations on the book. Keep fighting the good fight, and it's good to talk with you. Thank you so much. You too, Dana. Thank you. I appreciate it.